While North Korea may have signaled its intent to suspend nuclear tests in return for a summit between Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump, NATO's concerns over Pyongyang's nuclear ambitions remain. The alliance's top civilian leader, Jens Stoltenberg, recently described North Korea as a global threat. This behavior uh, of North Korea is a global threat and requires a global response, and that of course also includes uh, 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 NATO. I agree with the Secretary General with capabilities that are uh, beyond regional. Um, at some point soon, their, their missiles will be able to hit not just the United States, but Europe and other places. It takes unity and strong partnerships, those that span the Atlantic and the Pacific, to counter the prospect of a nuclear-armed North Korea, adds Barry Pavel. The question of NATO in the Pacific used to be, well, is NATO going to go to the Pacific? But I think the key question now is the Pacific is coming to NATO. While serving at NATO from 2003 to 2006, General James Jones met with officials from the Asia-Pacific region. I had visits from Australia. I uh, had visits from Pakistan, believe it or not, um, and other countries from different parts of the world wanting to know more about NATO. So this, to me, this is, this is the future of NATO. I, I hope that NATO's global aspirations are measured. Uh, I wouldn't do this quickly. I, I would start with uh, partnerships and see how that goes. NATO has four partners in the Pacific, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, and South Korea. Australia and New Zealand have deployed troops under the NATO banner in Afghanistan. Japan and South Korea have made big contributions to reconstruction and development efforts there. All four have taken part in NATO missions to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia, and all four have signed formal partnership agreements with NATO. Further afield, Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore all seem interested in partnering with NATO, say experts. India and Indonesia might also look for strong ties to such a group. In an age of globalized insecurity, it is natural for the Western alliance to expand its mandate, says former top NATO commander Jones. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization to be simply a, a reactive alliance that is to defend Europe, if you will, minus, uh, minus Russia, seems to be uh, a very expensive proposition that, that Russia doesn't have the, the force that it would need to defeat Europe. NATO has seen its primary focus evolve since its founding in 1949. In the 1950s, the alliance was a bulwark against the Soviet threat. In the 1960s and 70s, it was a political instrument for detente. In the 1990s, the alliance was a tool for stabilizing Eastern Europe and Central Asia, incorporating new partners and allies. Now in the 21st century, NATO is evolving again, as it faces new global risks entailing global defense. Jela De Franceschi, Washington, VOA News.